Hey guys, in this video, Ryu and I want to talk a bit about the whole Engon and Quad situation with the game assets. Um, there is so many different answers out there, and so many people that are just hating on the Engon crew, saying quads aren't necessary. There's way too much information uh, given out, and there's a lot of incorrect information given out. I'm going to say it right now, just right off the bat. You can use Engons in your game assets without issue. A lot of people say you can't. We're going to get into that in a second. Um, Engons are completely fine for game assets. And the main reason uh, people are saying they're not good is because usually, uh, if it's like a game company, for example, we actually had someone in our Facebook group, I think he was hiring people to his game company. I don't really know what he did. He said topology wasn't an issue to me. It was if you knew how to manage and use topology correctly. And I was getting so many bad... Um, bad applications of people who simply did not understand good topological workflow that we just kind of cut it off and said, you know what, all quads, show us a good portfolio render, all quads, and this is how I want to see it. So that's one of the big reasons a lot of people are saying, hey, we need quads, uh, simply because a lot of people don't know how to use NGONs correctly in their workflow. So I'm going to let Ryu kind of hop in on that a bit. Guys, angles is like alcohol, okay? It can be bad, it can be good, okay? Quads are like alcohol, the same thing. It can be good, it can be bad. You need to know how to use that thing, okay? If you are using Angons, or are using quads, or using both, you need to know your topology, you need to know your shading, and you need to know your edge flow. And if you know these, then you can use anything you want. Because the point is that at the end of the day, what matters is... Uh, the topology, um, uh, not the topology, the shading of the model, right? So if you, you know, let's say you have an animated model and it's organic and you're going to have angons, well, things going to go bad. But let's say you're using all quads and then you are not using quads of the same size and you're going to have the same problem with shading. Make an, you know, do an experiment, grab a, a model, run some edge loop through it in a quad model and run them too close to one another on a curve and you will see what happens. You're going to get, you know, nasty, nasty ridges. So the key, the key point here is that it's not what you're using, but how and when. I'll build on that a bit, actually. Um, so a big reason for using all quad workflow this is actually probably brand new information for a lot of you. The main reason quad workflow was hit so hard, or not hit as in a bad thing, but focused on so hard for so many years, is because quad workflow allowed for even subdivision surfaces. As long as you have like even mesh distribution, uh, good sets of quads placed in the right position, you know, the usual topological focuses you need to, you need to work with. As long as your mesh is clean, it'll subdivide fine with a subsurf modifier. It wasn't until, I think, Blender 2.8 when weighted normals were introduced. The whole con I don't know if the concept was new, but the weighted normal modifier itself came around Blender 2.8. And uh, this completely revolutionized the entire hard surface workflow. Because now, um, usually, N-Gons would give pretty terrible shading, especially when you had bevels, and there wasn't a really... A good workaround for it. A lot of people just use hard edges and that's not how you want to work. Bevels are important. After weighted normals were introduced, it completely eliminated some of the severe shading issues that you commonly run into. And this is a brand new pipeline of working. Like, if you guys use hard ops or box cutter, you're going to see, like, the whole hard surface workflow using normal manipulation, weighted normals, engons, bevels. This is all a relatively new workflow if you compare the tools we have to offer now compared to what we had I don't know 10 years ago when I started blender almost a decade ago I was using all quad subsurf workflow because there simply wasn't a way to get good shading with n-gons and like Ryu said even with all quads and subsurf you can still get horrible shading issues if you have poles all over the place if you don't know how to have even geo and clean up your loops proximity loops everything if you don't know how to create a mesh good with quads, it's going to be equally as bad as someone who doesn't know how to create a mesh good with n-gons. Quads can be just as problematic, and like I said, we're going to show all this in the course and kind of put this into play, but uh, 
That's another reason quads are so focused on, because this workflow we're introducing in this course is pretty new. So guys, the thing is that there are moments when you do need quads, okay? Let's say, you know, like I said, organic modeling when stuff bends and animates, or for example, when you work in a pipeline and you need to bring your model and give it to someone else, you know, push it down the pipeline and someone's gonna be, let's say, I don't know, bring your high poly to ZBrush and uh, uses Z remesher and you do need quads for this like you do need quads for quad remesher in blender which is basically based on the same on the same algorithm because the same people made it okay so you know those situations when quads are beneficial and even you know we use quads uh, quite a lot sometimes try to run for example clean trim sheets um, you know if you don't know how to do it it's difficult to run them not through a quad loop so like in this course, we, you know, we, um, uh, we created for you guys the A to Z design of the environment. You know, when, when I was uh, showing guys how to create these modular pieces for the environment, these are all quads, right? These are all quads or most of them quads because, you know, it's difficult to run a trim sheet through something that's not, not uh, quad like uh, you can, but you know, the, there are just ways of doing it. But anyway, the point is that, you know, quads are very much out there and we do use them. But definitely saying that you do need quads and quads only for game assets is just ridiculous because it couldn't be further from the truth, especially if you're working in sci-fi because sci-fi is a lot of hard surfaces, right? And if you like Josh said, if you know how to con control shading, you don't need quads, you don't need sharp edges, you don't need anything. All you need is bevels and weighted normals, and that's it. If you know how to control your edge flow and connect all the edges to to the cuts that, you know, are created by booleans, you will have a clean shading and you don't have to worry about anything. Now, then people will start, you know, started to say, well, how are you going to UV unwrap this? It's no problem. You know, there's absolutely no problem unwrapping end guns. You can, you, you know, the only... The only reason why people are staying away from angles for UV unwrapping is because, you know, they can get distorted. But you have tools, you know, you have tools like, for example, um, um, UV squares, which is a free add-on, or, for example, uh, Zen UV or other add-ons that allow you to uh, transform um, any deformed or, you know, disfigured angles uh, or, or basically UVs into something that's quad like so i i don't really understand where this you know quad mania comes from i think it's from the past like josh said you know uh, it's from the past it's it's basically people who are stuck in the old ways and you know they just i don't know think that this is the way it should be done which is absolutely bollocks you know because it it's not like that anymore uh, or maybe maybe never even you know maybe never even was like that uh, because I, I guarantee you that if you go to any game, okay, and let's say, you know, um, look at the models or even download the models from the game and look at them in Blender or any other software, I guarantee you that there's no such thing as all quads. Because it's just way too time consuming and unnecessary in, in this day and age. Well, yeah, only issue with that is if, if you had downloaded an asset from a game, it would be triangulated off the bat. But that almost further reinforces the point that, actually, I'll bring this up right now. Uh, triangulation, every single thing in a game engine will be triangulated. That's how it goes. Even in Blender, back end, things are triangulated. Bring a cube into Blender, look at the bottom right scene statistics, turn it on. You're going to see that there's an amount of tries, even if no tries are displayed in the scene. Everything is triangulated in some way. And uh, triangulations can be beneficial or they can hurt you. There's That's uh, one big flaw of N-Gons, I would say, is that really massive N-Gons can get really bad stretch triangulations and cause nasty distortions and sometimes shading artifacts. We'll discuss that in the course, but it's not as big of a deal because you can simply make the big N-Gons more manageable to get a better triangulation. Also, for, uh, for subdivision surface, another big reason that was used is because, remember, for those of you that have used Blender for a few years, or at least to learn the quad workflow, um, whenever you use subsurf, you tend to use proximity loops around the edges, right? It, um, it's to tighten it up so it's not as round. Well, think about what that's actually doing. 
it's creating a bevel. It's literally creating a bevel except without a bevel modifier using subsurf and proximity loops, which is basically the same thing as a bevel, but you, at the end of the day, you'd actually have more geometry, which doesn't matter too much because we'd bake it down. But yeah, a subsurf workflow is literally to create bevels in many situations as well. Why not just use an easy to create mesh with n-gons, learn how to manage the n-gons properly for the game engine, and texturing, unwrapping, everything. This is all what this course is about, guys, so we'll explain everything. Why not do it that way, make your life so much easier, and get a good quality game asset that's going to be just as clean as the one with all quads. Now, I do want to emphasize, I'm not saying those of you that have never learned quad workflow should just go take shortcuts. You have to learn the rules first to know how to bend them. So, uh, I don't want you guys to take this course and never learn quad workflow. Topology management is extremely important and understanding how to um, have clean topology and use quads when necessary is important. But, I think a lot of you guys are in the position where you can actually follow along with this course and learn when to and when to not use ngons. So, that's my two cents. All right, uh, I guess we'll wrap things up here. I mean, we got pretty much all the info out we wanted to get. I don't expect most of you to understand fully what we were talking about. We were just kind of having a casual conversation almost. But um, I wanted to put this before the course to make people come in with an open mind in the workflow. Because I found that if I'm just doing a pure NGON workflow and I, you know, I know what I'm doing, I get a lot of people, especially beginners, that come in and say, what about topology? Why aren't you using quads? And it's a good question to ask. It really is. But I want people to not even have to ask that question. I want people to come in with an open mind and whether they are super familiar with NGON workflow or how to use them for game assets or not, I just want people to come in and say, okay, let me just focus on what's being taught and see what I can learn to kind of broaden my horizons. So whether you're a quad junkie and gone junkie, I don't care. I just want everyone to come into the course with an open mind and focus on what we're teaching because that's the important part.